Hey, Teach. I see you're as stony-faced as usual. Hmm. I can't tell if you're feeling resigned or if you're just lost in thought. Or maybe you simply don't care about anything that's going on. Oh, sorry. I really didn't mean to be rude. I just find you fascinating. Actually, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Can you spare some time? That's just the sort of attitude I'd expect from a new teacher. Speaking of, before you came here, you were a mercenary, right? Always getting your hands dirty on the battlefield and whatnot. It's a bit unusual that you suddenly decided to become a teacher one day. In any case, I've been meaning to ask, did your father teach you how to fight? I figured your father used to lead the knights, didn't he? And I hear he was a legendary mercenary as well. It must have been hard on your mother when you followed in your father's footsteps and became a mercenary too. I see. I suppose you grew up moving from battlefield to battlefield with your father then. You know, for someone who's right around the same age as me, you certainly have an unusual amount of composure. I guess it's only natural that you'd be different from young nobles who grew up in the lap of luxury. Ha! <laughs> Well, even so, I am heir to House Regan, the leading family of the Alliance. But I didn't exactly grow up in luxury, like most people of noble blood. Hey, maybe that's why you and I get along so well. Folks like us should stick together. As House Leader, I'll do all I can to help you out. We can start by making time for more little chats like this. Hey, Teach, hold on a minute, okay? I'm gonna have this cleared up in no time. I came across a fascinating book about poisons, and so I wanted to try mixing one up myself. And... done! What do you think of that, Teach? A colorless, odorless poison. Say, care to test it out for me? In two days' time, you'll have a terrible case of... let's call it stomach trouble. It's a peaceful poison, so you'll live, but you'll certainly be inconvenienced. I hear your silent question, Teach. Why the delay? That's so it can be used even if you don't have access to the target when you need the poison to take effect. Uh, naturally, I have no immediate plans for this stuff. I suppose I just felt like broadening the old horizons a bit. When devising schemes, it's best to have as many options at your disposal as possible. Expanding those options is kind of a hobby for me. Well, I grew up in an environment where it was necessary to think that way. It's like I told you before, I wasn't born into a life of luxury. Ever since I was a child, I've always been seen as different from those around me. An outsider of sorts. I've been resented and hated. There have even been attempts on my life. I don't believe I've earned such treatment, but that's how it goes for people like me. Thanks, Teach. You know, in many ways, I'm just a normal person like everyone else. But in the right environment, anyone could be seen as an outsider. It can become overwhelming. And that's why I kept running. Kept fighting. As a kid, I spent a lot of time licking my wounds and coming up with schemes. Trying to keep my nose out of trouble while plotting against my enemies. My parents always told me I wouldn't grow stronger if I didn't learn to fight my own battles. And so in the end, I did. And I grew up to be as independent and self-reliant as my parents always wished for me to be. Lucky me, right? If anyone knows what I'm talking about, it must be you, eh, Teach? I get the feeling you know what it's like to be an outsider. The moment I first laid eyes on you, I knew you weren't like everyone else. People don't care for folks like that. You do well to watch your back. On the bright side, that's also part of the reason that I find you so interesting. Hey, Teach, do you believe in gods? I don't necessarily mean the goddess of the Saros religion, just gods in general. Do you believe that incredible beings who control the fates of all really exist? Hmm. That's not the answer I was expecting. Though, honestly, I've recently become a bit of a believer myself. I've always hated the idea of praying to a god. After all, you can only really rely on yourself. I still believe that. You can't win a war by leaving your fate in the hands of a god. 
Only tangible facts can really decide a war. Which side has the most troops, the best tactics, the better organization and planning? Of course, miracles can happen. And by that, I mean things that are completely outside of your control. Things that only seem to add up if you believe in the concept of fate. Things like, well, like meeting you, for example. You just seem sort of impossible. I think everyone would agree with that. You can wield the sword of the creator. You're a tactical genius, and you have this strange ability to earn the trust of anyone you cross paths with. Before I met you, I never imagined that it was possible for someone like you to exist. And yet, now that I know you, your presence in my life has quickly become invaluable. In fact, it's hard to imagine making my dreams come true without your help. Because of that, I can't believe for a second that our meeting was just a coincidence. That means it must have been fate. Maybe it was a miracle. Or maybe some god empathized with me in my dreams. Again, I don't mean the goddess of Fodlan, though I suppose it may be hard for you to grasp what I'm talking about. People all over the world have different ideas about who or what the gods are, right? Even in distant lands across the ocean or over the mountains. They have gods who see the world as a whole, who don't care about Fodlan's borders, who don't meddle in our affairs, who don't grant life or take it away. And maybe, sometimes, they'll make a miracle happen. A god like that, that's the sort of god I think I could believe in. Well, it doesn't really matter. Maybe gods like that only exist in my own head. I'm just speaking my mind, that's all. I think people should be free to believe in whatever gods they want. If a person believes in a god and that god becomes a support system for them, that's a good thing. That's what a god should be. Anyway, maybe I've overstepped a bit. I knew you'd understand. In any case, let's keep this conversation between the two of us, yeah? Oh, hey there. What are you doing up at this hour? Is that right? I guess the more you have to think about, the harder it is to fall asleep. At times like this, I like to gaze up at the stars to clear my head. I've been that way since I was a kid. Looking up at the big starry sky makes my dreams feel small. Which makes it feel like I can actually make them come true. I didn't believe in gods when I was a kid. Maybe that's because the night sky took their place for me. Hey, Teach. Will you talk with me a while? I bet you figured this out, but I wasn't born in Fodlan. Where I come from, the people of Fodlan are looked down on as cowards. Technically, that cowardice runs in my veins. On my mother's side, anyway. That's why the people who were around me when I was growing up thought of me as an outsider. But I don't believe the people of Fodlan are cowards. That kind of perspective is just based on ignorance. The person from Fodlan who I know best is my mother. She fell in love with a man from the wrong side of the border and had the guts to leave home to pursue that love. I always threw that in the faces of anyone who tried to make a fool of me. My mother is proof the people of Fodlan aren't all cowards. Just saying that doesn't achieve anything though. I need to destroy the prejudices that have taken root in my homeland. That's why I came here, to see Fodlan with my own eyes. I thought I might be able to find a new perspective that could help me change things. And what did I find? That the people here view anyone who's an outsider as a beast of sorts. I was shocked. Even though our cultures and beliefs are completely different, our two lands have that much in common. That's when I realized the only way to change things is to bring the whole world together and start anew. That's the dream I've been working towards since I first entered the Officers Academy five years ago. To unify the Alliance, and then all of Fodlan, and to bring a new set of values to this new land of mine. After that, I'd expand that vision to the rest of the world, break down the walls and let a new perspective come rushing in, start all over. Do you think that's just a crazy pipe dream, or a brilliant ambition? Not too long ago, I would have said it was too much for me to accomplish on my own. 
But that's not how I feel anymore. And that's because I have you on my side now. Lately, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I wouldn't have made it this far without you. You and me, Teach. We can go anywhere. Do anything. I hope that you always walk in step with me. At least, until the day comes when we can look out at the peaceful world we've built. Together. Hey, Teach. I see you're as stony-faced as usual. Hmm, I can't tell if you're feeling resigned or if you're just lost in thought. Or maybe you simply don't care about anything that's going on. Oh, sorry. I really didn't mean to be rude. I just find you fascinating. Actually, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Can you spare some time? That's just the sort of attitude I'd expect from a new teacher. Speaking of, before you came here, you were a mercenary, right? Always getting your hands dirty on the battlefield and whatnot. It's a bit unusual that you suddenly decided to become a teacher one day. In any case, I've been meaning to ask, did your father teach you how to fight? I figured, your father used to lead the knights, didn't he? And I hear he was a legendary mercenary as well. It must have been hard on your mother when you followed in your father's footsteps and became a mercenary too. I see. I suppose you grew up moving from battlefield to battlefield with your father then. You know, for someone who's right around the same age as me, you certainly have an unusual amount of composure. I guess it's only natural that you'd be different from young nobles who grew up in the lap of luxury. <laughs> well, even so, I am heir to House Regan, the leading family of the Alliance. But I didn't exactly grow up in luxury like most people of noble blood. Hey, maybe that's why you and I get along so well. Folks like us should stick together. As house leader, I'll do all I can to help you out. We can start by making time for more little chats like this. Hey, Teach, hold on a minute, okay? I'm gonna have this cleared up in no time. Nah, that's okay, I'll be finished soon. I'm just in the middle of mixing up a new poison. And done. What do you think of that, Teach? A colorless, odorless poison. Say, care to test it out for me? Whoa, really? Actually, I was just kidding. If you drink this, in two days' time, you'll have terrible, uh, let's call it stomach trouble. I hear your silent question, Teach. Why the delay? That's so it can be used even if you don't have access to the target when you need the poison to take effect. Uh, naturally, I have no immediate plans for this stuff. I suppose I just felt like broadening the old horizons a bit. When devising schemes, it's best to have as many options at your disposal as possible. Expanding those options is kind of a hobby for me. Well, I grew up in an environment where it was necessary to think that way. It's like I told you before, I wasn't born into a life of luxury. Ever since I was a child, I've always been seen as different from those around me. An outsider of sorts. I've been resented and hated. There have even been attempts on my life. I don't believe I've earned such treatment, but that's how it goes for people like me. Thanks, Teach. You know, in many ways, I'm just a normal person like everyone else. But in the right environment, anyone could be seen as an outsider. It can become overwhelming. And that's why I kept running, kept fighting. As a kid, I spent a lot of time licking my wounds and coming up with schemes, trying to keep my nose out of trouble while plotting against my enemies. My parents always told me I wouldn't grow stronger if I didn't learn to fight my own battles. And so in the end, I did. And I grew up to be as independent and self-reliant as my parents always wished for me to be. Lucky me, right? If anyone knows what I'm talking about, it must be you, eh, Teach? I get the feeling you know what it's like to be an outsider. The moment I first laid eyes on you, I knew you weren't like everyone else. People don't care for folks like that. You do well to watch your back. On the bright side, that's also part of the reason that I find you so interesting. Hey, Teach, do you believe in gods? I don't necessarily mean the goddess of the Saros religion, just gods in general. 
Do you believe that incredible beings who control the fates of all really exist? Yeah, I didn't think so. I never used to believe in that sort of thing either. I've always hated the idea of praying to a god. After all, you can only really rely on yourself. I still believe that. You can't win a war by leaving your fate in the hands of a god. Only tangible facts can really decide a war. Which side has the most troops, the best tactics, the better organization and planning? Of course, miracles can happen. And by that, I mean things that are completely outside of your control. Things that only seem to add up if you believe in the concept of fate. Things like, well, like meeting you, for example. You just seem sort of impossible. I think everyone would agree with that. You can wield the sword of the creator. You're a tactical genius, and you have this strange ability to earn the trust of anyone you cross paths with. Before I met you, I never imagined that it was possible for someone like you to exist. And yet, now that I know you, your presence in my life has quickly become invaluable. In fact, it's hard to imagine making my dreams come true without your help. Because of that, I can't believe for a second that our meeting was just a coincidence. That means it must have been fate. Maybe it was a miracle, or maybe some god empathized with me in my dreams. Again, I don't mean the goddess of Fodlan, though I suppose it may be hard for you to grasp what I'm talking about. People all over the world have different ideas about who or what the gods are, right? Even in distant lands across the ocean or over the mountains. They have gods who see the world as a whole, who don't care about Fodlan's borders, who don't meddle in our affairs, who don't grant life or take it away. And maybe, sometimes, they'll make a miracle happen. A god like that, that's the sort of god I think I could believe in. Careful, Teach. You'll anger the followers of Saros if you say things like that. I'm just speaking my mind, that's all. I think people should be free to believe in whatever gods they want. If a person believes in a god and that god becomes a support system for them, that's a good thing. That's what a god should be. Anyway, maybe I've overstepped a bit. I knew you'd understand. In any case, let's keep this conversation between the two of us, yeah? Oh, hey there. What are you doing up at this hour? My brain's just busy. Thoughts keep going around and around in there, and meanwhile my eyes are wide open. At times like this, I like to gaze up at the stars to clear my head. I've been that way since I was a kid. Looking up at the big starry sky makes my dreams feel small, which makes it feel like I can actually make them come true. I didn't believe in gods when I was a kid. Maybe that's because the night sky took their place for me. Hey, Teach. Will you talk with me a while? I bet you figured this out, but I wasn't born in Fodlan. Where I come from, the people of Fodlan are looked down on as cowards. Technically, that cowardice runs in my veins. On my mother's side, anyway. That's why the people who were around me when I was growing up thought of me as an outsider. But I don't believe the people of Fodlan are cowards. That kind of perspective is just based on ignorance. The person from Fodlan who I know best is my mother. She fell in love with a man from the wrong side of the border and had the guts to leave home to pursue that love. I always threw that in the faces of anyone who tried to make a fool of me. My mother is proof the people of Fodlan aren't all cowards. Just saying that doesn't achieve anything though. I need to destroy the prejudices that have taken root in my homeland. That's why I came here to see Fodlan with my own eyes. I thought I might be able to find a new perspective that could help me change things. And what did I find? That the people here view anyone who's an outsider as a beast of sorts. I was shocked. Even though our cultures and beliefs are completely different, our two lands have that much in common. That's when I realized the only way to change things is to bring the whole world together and start anew. That's the dream I've been working towards since I first entered the Officers Academy five years ago to unify the Alliance, and then all of Fodlan, and to bring a new set of values to this new land of mine. After that, 
I'd expand that vision to the rest of the world, break down the walls and let a new perspective come rushing in, start all over. Do you think that's just a crazy pipe dream or a brilliant ambition? Not too long ago, I would have said it was too much for me to accomplish on my own. But that's not how I feel anymore. And that's because I have you on my side now. Lately, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I wouldn't have made it this far without you. You and me, Teach. We can go anywhere. Do anything. I hope that you always walk in step with me. At least, until the day comes when we can look out at the peaceful world we've built. Together. Sorry for calling you out here like this. I wanted to talk, just the two of us. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. It seems like our long struggle may finally be coming to an end. The way forward will certainly be rough. Right now, Fodlan is like a newborn, frail and easily upset. If we don't create a new ruling system soon, the Empire and Kingdom will descend into chaos. The coronation ceremony is the first step. Only then will Fodlin truly be a single, united land. I'm sorry that I won't be by your side at such an important event, but I'm certain you'll do great. I must return to my homeland. As for ruling this new, unified land, well, I'll leave that to you. The Fodlin blood that flows in my veins. I've made use of it as best I could. Now I've got to use my other bloodline to change my homeland for the better. I have royal connections there too, insignificant as they may be. It's time for me to struggle all over again and see what good I can do. If I don't change things in both Fodlan and the lands beyond, I'll never set eyes on the kind of world I've dreamed of creating. You're the successor Rhea appointed, aren't you? And now you're also the hero who saved Fodlan. All those weak people who have nothing to cling to but their goddess, they'll rely on you just like they used to rely on Rhea. You'll be a leader all who are struggling to survive in war-torn lands can look up to. And I... I want a ruler who can lay down a new set of values for the people. Values that don't exclude anyone for being different. I know it's a lot to ask. But you're the only one who can do it. I have something else to ask. Please, I hope you'll accept this. When I first saw you wield the sword of the Creator, I wanted to use your power to my advantage. I wanted to use you to make my dream of a new world come true. But before long, I realized what I really wanted was to see that new world with you by my side. I still feel that way, you know? I always will. That's why I have to leave but nothing will stop me from coming back. There's no way I'm gonna let you go. You know that, don't you? Thank you. For everything. I'll be back before you know it. We'll only be apart for a short while. And now, I'm off to cross Fodlin's throat. I love you. With everything I am. And the next time we see each other, it will be at the dawn of a whole new world. A peaceful, happy world. This looks like an ideal place to take a nap. Only one way to know for sure. Ah, and there's a nice breeze today, too. Claude? Huh? Why are you taking a sleep on the ground, Claude? Is that Petra? Where are you? Were you up in that tree the whole time? I couldn't feel your presence at all. Amazing. It is safe to take sleep in the tree's top. Why would you choose the dangerous ground instead? Your logic is sound, I'll give you that. But how is one supposed to get up there without losing the sleepies from the effort? I do not know what is meant by the sleepies, but getting in the tree's top is easy. And you will be using all of your energy. 
So that good sleep will find you up in the tree. I see. That makes a certain kind of sense, but it's not as relaxing as a good ground sleep. Give it some trying. And do not think with too much hardness when you return to the ground. Feel it. If you stop for thinking, your arms will get heavy. That is way more thought than I'd hoped to give this nap of mine. But I'm not one to give up before even trying. Here goes nothing. I, I can do this! I have not known a noble here who can climb trees. Is this a weakness of Fodlan nobles? No, not a weakness. I just... How do I... Ah! You should be quitting. It is a danger to be falling from such a height. Oh, I, I think that's enough for today. This might sound like an excuse, but we don't have a lot of tall trees where I grew up. This is all new to me. You should take your sleep on the ground. I will take mine in the tree. Uh, you won that round, tree. Hey there, Petra. Claude? Where are you? Where else? Wait, I'll meet you down there. Claude! I thought you were not able to climb the trees. True, and that is exactly why I worked like a madman to devise a new climbing technique. I have much admiration for that. To climb is a skill with value. Uh, what can I say? I just... Okay, so I may have cheated a little. By using my bow to shoot a rope over a branch, or a few branches, or all of the branches. But once I got up there and hauled up the ropes, it was the same result as if I'd climbed it your way. I am understanding. That costs more time, though, so it is not the best thing for hunting. But you are not harming the tree, so that is... an advantage. I am liking this technique. You're right. I didn't harm the tree at all. I'm surprised that impressed you. The tree has a spirit. If you hurt the tree, you will give its spirit anger. I see. I take it the people of Bridget have a close relationship with nature, then? Trees give us food and also shelter. We are needing them, and they are needing us. True. The people of Fodland believe everything is a blessing from the goddess. They've forgotten to be grateful to nature, too. Nature gives us life, sustains us. Without it, we couldn't breathe, couldn't live. It's everything. It's fine to pray to the goddess, but we have to respect nature, too. Don't you think? Yes. I do not know this goddess, but I know nature. That is the knowing I prefer to have. You and me both. Thod, what are you doing? The training equipment needed maintenance, so I thought I'd give it a good cleaning and some oil. Why is that for you to do? If you intend to use something a lot, it's on you to take good care of it. You are a noble who does not have fear of working with hardness or becoming dirty. And you can climb trees. I am... impressed. Thanks, but to be honest, I don't think being a noble really has anything to do with anything. Nobles and commoners are all equal here. We're all buddies. Even you do chores, don't you? Social rank doesn't matter when you put your life in each other's hands. I like that about this place. I have your same opinion. Status is something chosen by chance, not by a person. Everything became different when I came from Bridget to the Empire. Nobility does not stop life from surprising you. I know just what you mean. It's not like the ancestors of the nobility or royalty were selected by the goddess herself, after all. What does origin or status matter? In the grand scheme of things, we're all just insignificant mortals. Nobility isn't a matter of birthright alone. At least not in my eyes. Claude, you are... <laughs> Very much strange for a noble. Thanks, and same to you. You're a princess of Bridget, right? If I'm a strange noble, you are too. I am normal in Bridget. In Fodlin, you are an... abnormality. <laughs> an abnormality, am I? Gentleman that I am, I'll go ahead and take that as a compliment. I think also that your heart is kind. I am thinking you will be a good king. I'll remember that. But for now, this equipment isn't going to clean itself. I will be helping you. We will join together our efforts. <laughs> You're an abnormality, Princess. A wonderful abnormality. 
Hey, Petra, are you there? Yes. What is your need? Oh, I didn't actually think you'd be here. You think I am not here, but you were calling for me. It seemed best to call out as soon as I arrived. I can never tell when you're here, and it wouldn't be good for my heart if you just dropped in from out of nowhere. When I was arriving, I called out for Claude, too. I was thinking it would give me joy if you were here. Is that a fact? I'm honored. Anyway, I see you beat me here today. Say, Petra, wouldn't it be great if, no matter how bad the war gets, at least this place stayed peaceful? Yes, I think so. I like this tree. It gives me calmness. I like this tree, too. It feels like it's always welcoming and reliable. But when the war has ended, I must be leaving this tree. I must be returning to Bridget. Claude, my grandfather has been saying I must be... Uh, must find a husband of Fodlin. Whoa, where did that come from? You sly minx, have you been searching for a suitor all this time? If Fodlin and Bridget become bound by marriage, it will give my grandfather great joy. Well, you are a princess, so it makes sense that you have obligations. I am not having an obligation. I will only be marrying if I find a good person. So, you just need to find a man who meets your expectations. That could be tricky. No, I will be finding one. It will not be a problem. Oh? Then who's the lucky fellow? It is my secret. I will not be telling him yet. I see. Do you think he can give you the kind of future you deserve? I am not knowing about the future. But my perfection... Uh, my perfect husband could be him. And if he gives refusal, I will be tying him up and dragging him home. Tie up? <laughs> well, I'm sure the lucky man will learn to accept his fate one way or another. Besides, I doubt any man would reject a proposal from a catch like you. Creepity creep. Huh? Living in a land that's dark and blinded by the frigid cold Creeping through the loneliness for ages untold In your heart you're desperate for the sweet embrace of light Pushing through and crawling with all of your might Here! Creepy creepy creepity creep Now! Creepy creepy creepity creep Oh! Claude! You weren't, uh... Watching me, were you? I saw the whole ritual, yes. You have a gift, Annette. I could watch that all day. In fact, I just might. Claude! Ugh, can you please forget you saw that? I was just making up a silly song to pass the time while watering the plants. Sure, sure. It could be my secret serenade, if you so please. But tell me, you were born in Fargus, right? Yes, that's right. I thought so. You're really talented, you know. It's been a while since I heard a song like that. One that stirs me to my very soul. Soul stirring? My creepity creep song? I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. I never, ever exaggerate. In fact, it reminded me of rituals we have back where I grew up. We'd gather around a blazing fire and spend the whole night caught up in song and dance. Not unlike what you just demonstrated. Really, the dance I'm thinking of is exactly like the one you just did. We'd scream like beasts and then jump up and roll around. It's freeing, isn't it? Scream? Like a beast? That is not what I was doing! And... And what's this weird ritual you're talking about? Even better than your angelic voice were your lyrics. I can't even begin to fathom the deep meaning they contain, but maybe if we talk about it... Deep meaning? No, just... no. Oh, I get it. It's the sort of thing you have to figure out for yourself. Okay, don't tell me. Give me time. I'll work it out. Work what out? Oh, have you already watered the plants? Sorry, I'm just realizing it was supposed to be my turn this week. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. Really. Okay, see you later then. Creep, buddy, creep. He is not gonna let this go, is he? Hi, Annette. Looks like some tasty food you've got there. Mind if I join you? Sure, but I'm finished eating. You're here late. Busy day? Very. I got caught up thinking about your song. 
I find it really makes the time fly. Huh, so you didn't manage to forget about that. I really wish you would. Alas, I cannot. That song is engraved on my soul. The lyrics, they echo in my brain, begging to be understood. Those words represent the cry of a poor soul who died in anguish. Is that it? That's it, isn't it? The cry of a poor soul? A land that's dark and frigidly cold. That could only mean the underworld. In my search for truth, I read up on the old rituals of the eastern regions of Fargus. Those who die with regret are thought to end up in an underworld of sorts. Somewhere cold, somewhere dark, somewhere creepy. To escape from their bitter limbo, they dig their way up through the earth, trying to find the surface, or the light, in other words. And so they creep about endlessly in the cold dirt of the underworld, clinging to their hopeless desire. Creepity creep, Annette. Creepity creep. Uh... So, was I right, or was I right? What? No, you're not even close. It wasn't supposed to be a dark and miserable song at all. Huh. Now that I think about it, the melody and dance didn't really match the weight of the lyrics. The lyrics are simply about seeds pushing out of the ground to become sweet little buds. They creep through the dirt until they find the light. The song just describes what it's like to be a budding flower. Damn. That is good stuff. Okay, maybe I read too much into it. Actually, now that you've explained, it really is a nice little song. Creepity Creep. The gentle journey from the ground to the surface. I love it. Do you think it's embarrassing that I made up such a silly song? Not at all. Oh, but that reminds me. I was so inspired by Creepity Creep that I made up some lyrics of my own. I've been nonchalantly carrying them around with me, hoping to run into you. Would you mind taking a look? Oh, of course. Let's see here. Walking with purpose and a steady stride, lively and bright and full of pride. Crying, laughing, and blazing ahead. Why worry about tomorrow? Let's eat instead. So, uh, what would you say this song is about, Claude? Oh, Annette. Sweet Annette. This time it's your turn to decipher its meaning. Let me know when you've figured it out. Hey Claude, I think I've worked out what your lyrics mean. Care to hear me out? Huh? Sure. So you managed to work through the labyrinth of my melodic poetry then? I did. You were writing about yourself, right? About how you just keep moving forward no matter what difficulties you encounter? We've got this, we did it, now let's eat. That kind of thing. Am I right? Hey, that's pretty close for being completely wrong. It's actually not about me. It's about you, Annette. It's a song about your single-minded march through life. It's about me? Of course. You know, about how you mess up and make a big fuss about stuff sometimes, but you're always looking ahead and striving. I just wanted to capture your pleasant, fidgety, fussy nature in a song. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I'm flattered. I think. Actually, I can't really tell if you're saying something nice or not. Of course I'm saying something nice. I'm so happy I get to be friends with someone like you. Everyone's really uplifted by your cheerful attitude, your refusal to give up, and that boisterous nature of yours. <laughs> Boisterous. That's definitely not a compliment. <laughs> Still, thank you, Claude. I'm really pleased that you thought so hard about me and wrote a neat song like that. You know, what this song really needs is a nice little dance to go with it. I couldn't agree more. And once you've finished, you should perform it for everyone. You're a fine dancer, after all. <laughs> nope, not happening. I'm afraid my dances are not for public consumption. It will have to suffice that I let you see it. Uh, you drive a hard bargain. And if this performance is just for me, maybe I can coax you into letting me hear some of your other songs? Hmm, I suppose there are a few others I could maybe share. Like my bear song. Or my dungeon song. Ooh, or the Waltz of the Swamp Beasties! <laughs> I have never been more on board with anything in my entire life. Oh, they're all just silly songs. I don't know that they're anything worth being excited about. 
I'll be the judge of that, and I can tell just by their descriptions that I'm right to be excited. Well, I guess I have no choice. I'm making an exception just for you, Claude. I'm honored to be the exception, as well as your number one fan. What's on your mind, Ingrid? Actually, if it's something troublesome, can it wait a bit? I am positively exhausted today, so I was gonna turn in early. Don't you try to stop me, you hear? The sun just barely dipped below the horizon, yet you're already preparing for bed? Rising with the dawn and setting with the sun. Isn't that how a life is meant to be lived? I'm almost certain you have never been awake at sunrise, Claude. How would you know that? You haven't been peeking into my room every morning, right? I'll have you know I like to rise early for my daily meditation. Uh-huh, sure. And I've decided to quit my pursuit of knighthood. At least try to make your excuses more believable. And that yawn just now. You didn't even bother covering your gaping mouth. One would never know you're of noble birth with how you conduct yourself. You need to relax, Ingrid. Deep breaths, okay? A yawn can't hurt, I swear it. Really, you'd better get a hold on that attitude of yours. Otherwise, that pretty face is gonna get all twisted up with angry lines. Guys don't like gals who are always griping at them. Try a smile every now and then. Here, let's practice. On three. One, two, three. You're actually telling me to smile more, aren't you? How common? Hmm, since you're so insistent upon telling me what my face should be doing, perhaps my blade can restructure your face with a more permanent smile. All jokes aside, are you not house leader? As a leader, you should set a shining example. A position such as yours comes with responsibilities. See that you consider them more carefully in the future. Yeesh. And just how long do you plan on lounging about yawning like a slob? At least lounge in your own quarters. Um, okay? Honestly, some people... Wow, somebody needs to teach that girl to lighten up. Ingrid, hello. Yes, Claude? Listen, I know you and I don't always get along. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry if my way of being is upsetting to you. If anyone should be making apologies, it's probably me. I've been overly harsh toward you on more than one occasion. I am close friends with someone who has caused me no end of trouble since we were very young. You remind me a bit of him, and I think I've projected my annoyances at him onto you, at times. Huh. Am I really that similar to this friend of yours? Uh, not in every regard, no. You certainly seem to treat those of the opposite gender with quite a bit more respect, for one thing. Well now, I'll take that as a compliment. You also speak to me in a much more amicable manner than my dear friend ever does. Hmm. Okay, I have to ask you something, but only if you promise not to show me your angry lines again. Doesn't that straight-laced personality of yours make life harder than it needs to be? I feel like there are plenty of people who'd like to get to know you better, but who are scared off by your, well, intense attitude. Oh, really? Really. I'd say that especially applies to most of the folks you go around giving lectures to. We're all friends here, Ingrid. We all trust each other with our very lives on the battlefield. Shouldn't we try to accept each other? You have a point. I sure do. Besides, with a cute face like yours, I bet you could win anyone over if you just threw out a smile now and then. I've got better things to concern myself with. In any case, you speak as though you know so much about wooing the masses. But I would wager that many of our classmates find it difficult to trust one as slovenly as yourself. Oh, another lecture. I see you took my words to heart. Look, let's just call a truce, shall we? How about we agree that we could both learn something from our chat today? If you'll make an effort to smile more, I'll try my best to set a better example for everyone. That seems like an unreasonable thing to ask of you. I wonder if you're capable of such a thing. And it's perhaps equally wild to ask an ice block like you to melt. But let's give it a try. What do you say? I suppose it's only virtuous to ask as much of myself as I'm asking of you. Very well. 
I accept your challenge. Ah, hello, Ingrid. A good day to you. Well, hello there. If it isn't Claude, always a pleasure. You put in a fine performance in training today. I must redouble my own efforts. <laughs> That's kind of you to say. By the by, do you have a moment to spare? I have been meaning to ask for your input on some new strategies. Oh, goodness. Only if you think someone as lowly as myself might be of service. But of course, I value your skills more highly than most any other. Oh, goodness. Okay, time out. Listen, Ingrid, do you really have to say, oh, goodness, every couple of seconds? What do you expect? Speaking to me as you were, I only responded in kind. What? Do I sound that strange? I thought I was acting earnest and industrious. I mean, yes, you do. You sound nothing short of ridiculous. Sheesh. Have you looked in a mirror lately? You're the one who's been walking around like queen uptight. Excuse me? I'll admit it was a bit forced, but it certainly doesn't warrant such a title. Uh, look, this was fresh and fun for a while, but uh, maybe it's time we called it quits. Acting like this isn't us. We're just going to make everyone think we've gone mad. I agree. I must say, I have an easier time getting on with you when you're you, and all your you-ness. Come to think of it, you've always been more reliable than most anyone I know, when it really mattered. <laughs> well, thanks for saying that. I think I liked you better when you were a bit pricklier too. I've gone so long without hearing one of your lectures, I'm almost starting to miss them. I'm sure I can remedy that for you. Uh, I didn't mean you need to go all out or anything. A little restraint would still be nice. My lectures, as you call them, only persist as long as is necessary. Oh, I think I'm coming down with a stomach ache. We'll talk later, okay? Okay, see ya. You honestly expect me to believe that? Come back here, Claude. Hi, Ingrid. That was a great training session today, wasn't it? It was indeed, Claude. It's so nice to see you. Things have been pretty busy lately, though. I hope you're taking the time to rest whenever you have the chance. I thank you for the concern. You are ever so kind. I've finally got a free day tomorrow, so I was planning to sleep through the morning and laze around all day. That sounds so lovely. Perhaps I should do the same. Ingrid, will you just stop it already? Are you still doing that shtick? Whatever do you mean? Are you feeling all right? You're acting so... demure. It's kind of creeping me out. Ugh, you can't be serious. I always knew you were a layabout. But I see now you're also an insensitive nitwit, too. If I lecture you, you complain. If I act pleasant, you also complain. Ah, you switched back! Please, tell me how to behave. At least if you're commandeering my behavior, I'll get less of an earful of your complaints. Have you ever even once considered thinking before you speak? And you wonder why people so rarely trust you. Ah, right. I'm sorry, I guess that was kind of insensitive. Wow, quite the apology. Sounds a lot like one of your myriad excuses. Do you really expect empty apologies to help you get your way? I'm... Suddenly feeling dizzy. Oh, so dizzy. We'll have to talk about this later. There you go again. You and your excuses. <sighs> I thought if I made extra efforts to be pleasant, he and I might finally interact without bickering. I just don't know what the best approach is with him. There is no best approach. Were you listening to everything I just said? Ugh. I thought you'd run off. I told you before, didn't I? You're better off as your normal, prickly self. I don't mind getting lectured by you, so keep on doing that from time to time, okay? Just maybe not all of the time. Anyway, oh, the dizziness. Bye. <laughs> as if an occasional lecture could ever cut it. You, just what are you up to? Well, if it isn't Lawrence. Yes, it is. Try not to sound so affronted. And you're just whimsically wandering the monastery grounds again, I suppose? 
Oh, naturally. After all, I really do adore the Garrick Mock Monastery. No, I think not. That impish look on your face does not suggest innocence. You are up to something. Lawrence, control yourself. Let's not start throwing around baseless accusations. It's not proper. This monastery is packed with a thousand years of history. Well, five years shy of a thousand if we're going for accuracy. Those pillars, these walls, even the floor, they've all seen more than we can possibly imagine. Our distant ancestors may have walked these very halls. Doesn't that excite you? Perhaps, if this were a discussion about art, but I'm afraid walls and floors are not sufficiently interesting to hold my attention. Nor will they suffice to distract me from what is plainly suspicious about you. House Regan was on the brink of collapse until they suddenly revealed you as their legitimate heir. That was only a year ago. Where were you before then? Are you even a true heir to House Regan? If I weren't truly of House Regan descent, how do you imagine I acquired my crest? A crest is insufficient. I am referring to your noble disposition, or lack thereof. Well, that's what I came here to hone, after all. I can only hope that you will assent to instruct me in the art of snobbery, Professor Lawrence. I do not think you grasp the significance of the responsibility you bear. Do you even know what it means to lead the Leicester Alliance? I take no pleasure in saying this, but much of the chaos in our ranks right now is due to the failings of House Regan's leadership. I intend to set things right. And once I expose you for the fraud you are and reclaim my rightful place, that is precisely what I will do. To be blunt, it would have been better had you never shown your face here. Sheesh, that guy. He just can't be reasoned with. Claude, are you aware of the most recent conflict within the Alliance? Hello to you too, Lawrence. And you'll have to be more specific. The Alliance is always bickering over one thing or another. Margrave Edmund is raising objections over the assignment of his troops to the Eastern Defenses. If you please one noble, another will only gripe. No matter what happens, there will always be conflict. That is just the kind of lackadaisical attitude that causes more conflict among us than necessary. Now, listen to me carefully. House Edmund may not hold much land, but the land they do control is quite rich. They also maintain a thriving port. Their influence is poised to rival even the most powerful players in the Alliance. Yet they claim they cannot spare a fair share of troops? Do you find it acceptable to let such an obviously unreasonable objection stand? It's not as though the threat of Almira to the East has proven all that threatening of late. Such negligence! What makes you so certain the Almirans will not attack us tomorrow? If certain dukes hold back their proper share of support, it will only serve to weaken House Goneril's hold of our eastern flank. <sighs> Calm yourself. I am well aware that the financial situation of House Edmund is quite exceptional. However, what you fail to realize is that they're lacking in troops. They're not lying when they say they don't have that many to spare. As it were, the Almirans have been nothing but peaceful since we refortified Fodlan's Locket. And are you aware that Margrave Edmund paid the majority of the costs for those repairs? Is that so? In fact, it's largely thanks to the skilled craftsmen he assembled that the fortress is now so impregnable. I, for one, wouldn't want to attack a fortress as formidable as that. I do see your point. If House Edmund has already made its fair contribution, then that is all we can ask. Very well. I withdraw my objection. But even the sturdiest fortress needs soldiers to defend it. If we continue to squabble amongst ourselves, it will eventually fall. Well, well. And here I thought he only cared about status. Still, if someone like him really came to lead the Alliance, it would not bode well for Almira. The earth nurtures the trees, and the trees bear fruit. It's the earth itself that gives us all life. O oh, Fodlan, land of plenty, bless us with the gift of delicious food. What are you doing? I, oh, it's just you, Lawrence. I was disturbed by your ridiculous blather. Must you recite it quite so loudly? And can you even call that nonsense poetry when it is utterly ignorant of rhyme and meter? Ouch! You don't hold back, do you? I didn't know you were so particular about poetry. Ha! <laughs> Maybe you have a secret poetry collection of your own hidden somewhere. That's absurd! Where did you hear that? 
And just what was that poem about? It seemed to me that you were praising the land. But is it not the goddess who nurtures the land? Should your praise not go to her instead? Of course you zero in on that detail. You really are a Fodlin noble through and through. Certainly. Aren't you? I'm not quite the same, no. Though noble blood flows within me, it can't change who I am at heart. Pardon? I think you had best clarify. Listen, Lawrence. You had ambitions of becoming the Alliance's ruler, didn't you? Would you like to try that for real? If you really want it, I wouldn't mind giving up my position. What's this all of a sudden? That is not an offer to be made in jest. I'm not joking around. I've been thinking it for a while now. I originally thought you were like a fox drawn in by the deer of the Alliance. But I was wrong. You're no thoughtless predator. You're trying to properly train the deer around you. Isn't that right? That is my intention. But the ambition is insufficient. To rule well, a certain temperament is required. When we first met, I mistrusted you a great deal. And on my father's advice, I observed you closely. That is why I can say this for certain. You possess the qualities necessary to govern. A compliment from you? That's about as rare as a deer standing on its hind legs and doing a jig. Merely a statement of fact. One that is quite relevant to the future of the Alliance. The future of the Alliance, huh? You really are devoted to your cause. Depending on your actions, I may yet see fit to seize your position for myself. Bear that in mind. <laughs> I welcome the idea. It means I can feel safe vanishing whenever I see fit. Vanishing? Do not tell me you intend to die in this conflict. You cannot shape the future if you do not live to see it. Ha! <laughs> First you compliment me, and now you're worrying about me? What have you done with the real Lawrence? No, I'm not going to die. I'm tougher than I look. Besides, this war isn't just for the Alliance anymore. It's going to decide the fate of all Fodlan. It would be cruel to leave you with the burden of uniting all of Fodlan by yourself, don't you think? Burden? Please. If there were none other suitable, I would gladly become a king. Or even an emperor. Well, well. I guess I shouldn't take Lawrence of the famous House Gloucester so lightly. Really, though. Don't you go dying on me either, Lawrence. We're going to need men like you in the age to come. The same to you, Claude. A world without you would be ever so dull. There we go. Time for a break. Hey, Raphael. That's quite a load you've got there. It was my turn to do the shopping again, but I might have overdone it. Aren't those trips usually for food supplies? Why did you pick up a bunch of spears and gauntlets as well? I was passing by the smithy, and the old man called me over. He said he was finished repairing the training weapons, so I grabbed them since I was already there. I see. And those books? I had just left the smithy when I ran into a merchant I recognized. He said he had some books that he brought for the library, so I took them off his hands. Right. And that desk? Oh, this? Can you believe someone threw this away? It only needs a little work and it'll be good as new. Someone around here was just saying that they needed a desk. Uh, of course. Now, this is just a friendly observation, but I see surprisingly little of the food supplies that we actually need. <laughs> well, I uh, worked up an appetite from carrying all this stuff, so uh, I had a snack on my way back. Raphael. I appreciate the thought, but you can't get so carried away with helping out like that. You helped us all right out of dinner. And now that I've seen your struggle, I have no choice but to join in this vicious cycle of charity. Here, I'll lend you a hand. All of this stuff is pretty heavy. Are you sure you can handle it? You insult me! And no, I can't. I'll only carry the books and offer my support as you handle the rest. <sighs> Time to rest. Hey, Raphael. This scene, why is it oddly familiar? <laughs> it's almost like this stuff is drawn to me whenever I'm in town. I'm just happy I can use my muscles to help out around here. 
But isn't your goal to become a knight? Running errands isn't exactly a knight's job. I heard that proper knights always help those in need. Isn't that right? Well, you're not wrong, but I think most people would consider that only a small part of a knight's duty. A knight's main function is to fight and defend, don't you think? That said, I'll agree that helping anyone and everyone who needs it makes you a remarkably virtuous person, which is even better. If someone virtuous becomes a knight, they'll be a virtuous knight, right? That's about as proper as you can get. I... yes, I suppose so. I, for one, would certainly look for virtue in any knight that I recruited. So you're saying I'm the type of knight you want to hire for House Regan? Absolutely. If I somehow actually manage to become the head of my house, that is. I can't see into the future, but you have my word that I'll do all I can to help make your dream a reality. That is, if you're actually able to let somebody help you out rather than helping out the whole world by yourself. I'm not going to stop helping others, but you can do me all the favors you want. All this talk of being proper is making me hungry. For my first favor, why don't you bring me a snack? Why didn't you say anything? You were praying so fervently, I didn't want to interrupt. I appreciate the sentiment, but I wasn't praying. No? What then? I was just thinking about the goddess. Were you now? Fascinating. Please, go on. Not here. Let's go somewhere else. So, you were pondering the existence of the goddess then? Yes. All right, consider this. The archives here have all kinds of texts about the goddess, right? But when people tell stories of the goddess, it's only myths and legends that glorify her. They probably hope to rake in more followers by glorifying the goddess as much as possible. That would be why the church tends to quietly shove all of their more questionable records under some secret rug somewhere. C claude don't put words in my mouth. That's not what I said. I was just wondering what the goddess looks like. That's the kind of thing I like to think about. What the goddess looks like? Well, I suppose if she really exists, she probably looks a lot like us. In fact, she probably wouldn't be so different from that old woman working here in the dining hall. What, Claude? Please stop. The goddess I imagine is absolutely beautiful. How rude of you, Ignatz. I'm sure that old woman was lovely back in her day. Hey, Ignatz. Getting lost in your imagination again? No. Today I am praying. I'm hoping that if I pray with all my might, she will appear before me. The goddess, you mean? Yes. Perhaps it's strange to think about such things. Nah, you're fine. If I had the chance to meet the goddess, I certainly wouldn't say no. Especially your version of the goddess, huh? A total looker, isn't that right? That's a disrespectful way of putting it. I just believe that she's a divine beauty. She'd have to be, considering how she mesmerized the people of Fodlin when she walked among them. Too true. No doubt an incomparable beauty, that one. Who do you think is lovelier, the goddess or our own Teach? You can't go around saying things like that. How am I supposed to answer? Funny to think that even now she must be somewhere, right? Well, I guess she's just floating on a cloud or whatnot. Yes, indeed. Watching over us from above. And they say that someday she will return to walk amongst us again. Well, don't mind me. You go ahead and get some good praying in. If the goddess appears, you let me know, okay? What? No! If she does appear, I want it to just be the goddess and me. It'll be way better if I'm there, too. I'm saying this for your benefit, Ignatz. Why? Imagine an incomparable beauty standing before you. Do you really think you'll be able to remain calm? Uh, well, that is to say... But if I'm there, I can smooth things over. Have a nice chat, invite her to tea, everything a goddess deserves. Oh, well, I suppose that makes sense. Of course it does. Now, get on with it. Pray like you've never prayed before. Ah, so I see. 
If one were to combine this incantation method with the power of a crest, then in theory, it should... Hey there. Still studying, are we? Isn't it past your bedtime? Claude, I really don't appreciate you interrupting me right now. Uh, but if you don't get your sleep, you're never gonna grow big and strong. Uh-huh. The last thing I need is you fretting over me as though I'm some child. I'm only a few years younger than you, you know. Hardly worth noting. Furthermore, my grades in magic and basically every other subject are far higher than yours. Whoa there. I'm not trying to treat you like a child, I promise. This is me treating you like... like a princess. Now, come along, princess. Brush your teeth and get yourself ready for bed. I could read you a story, if that helps. Ugh, the audacity. Whatever it is you think you're treating me like, it's unendingly annoying. If a child and a princess are out, what's left? Should I treat you as a noble hero? Draw your sword, Lysithia. If you wish to continue studying, you must first defeat me in battle. Come now, face me like the hero of legend that you are. I find myself speechless in the wake of your staggering ignorance. Now, please, leave me be. Okay, okay, I can take a hint. But in all seriousness, you shouldn't neglect your sleep. You'll fall ill if you push yourself too hard. Oh, and just so you know, I heard a rumor that this library is haunted. <gasps> it's probably not true. Right? Right. Anyhow, I'm off to bed. Good night. You know, I am suddenly rather sleepy. Excuse me while I see myself out. <laughs> no matter how she tries to hide it, she's still a young girl at heart. As you can see, if we were to face an enemy on this terrain, I would go here, and you would go here. Hang on. If we're trying to repel the enemy, I should be positioned there, correct? Huh? I'm not sure that's the best idea. Take a closer look at this map. See? There's a graveyard over here. Might run into some of those ghosts you hate so much. Claude, will you knock it off already? So help me. If you continue treating me like a child, I'll... Easy there. I I'm sorry, okay? Just don't start blasting off any spells in here. <laughs> I've more pride than to turn an unarmed soldier to cinders. It wouldn't kill you to speak to me as an equal when we're discussing matters as serious as this. Actually, I see you as more than an equal. There's no questioning the power you wield. And I was being serious about the formation just now. The bit about the ghosts was just me having fun with you. Or trying to? You're so smart, I figured you'd catch on to that right away. But back to the formation. Can you see why I arranged it like I did? Hmm. The area I want you to guard requires the ability to adapt to an ever-changing situation. Who else could I trust with such a difficult task? You're my best bet for something like that. Perhaps that's true. Think back to the times we fought together. When have I ever treated you like a child on the battlefield? I depend on you, Lysithia. I value your power almost as much as I do teaches. Truly? I swear to you on all of Fodlan. I'd like to have my fun, but I wouldn't joke about something like that. I consider you a valued ally. I'll stop now before I inevitably drift back into teasing you again. Just know that I meant every word, okay? Fair enough then. From here forward, see to it that you treat me with the respect of an equal. And I admit that you are not short on talent yourself, but don't go getting a big head over it. Strategically speaking, if I poised an archer to lie in wait here, and then lured the enemy in over here... Lysithia, are you up late studying again? I am, but I don't see how it's any of your business. Look, you don't need to work yourself so hard. You're already as skilled as they come. There aren't many people out there who can match you. Everyone knows that. I apologize for my sharpness. I just feel pressured. Why would you, of all people, feel pressured? I place a lot of personal pressure on myself. I need to become as strong as possible to put my parents at ease. When I met with Count Ordelia before, 
He said you were his pride and joy. But he also said his only concern was that you might be pushing yourself too hard. If you really want to make your parents happy, surely you should start by taking care of yourself. That's true. Then it's settled. Get some rest. Save your energy for tomorrow's battle. You really are very mature, Claude, despite the impression you give off. And I clearly have plenty of growing to do. I probably don't have much room to come down on you for harping on me. Oh, really? Does that mean you won't get mad if I treat you like a child from now on? That is absolutely not what I said. Just after you finally earned a small degree of respect from me, too. Hey, just think about it for a second. You're the only one in the world I treat like this. That means you're a pretty special person to me. You think I'm special? Take it however you like. Or maybe the thought is too much for a kiddo like you. Duh, how dare you! Yeah, don't do anything you might regret. I don't want to be turned to dust. I'm feeling generous, so I'll let you off easy this one time. <laughs> well, that's good of you. All joking aside, go get yourself some shut-eye, okay? After all, if you don't hurry up, the boogeyman might come out and eat you. All right, buddy, you asked for it. Hmm. Um, Claude? Hmm? Oh, Marianne. Have the gods taken pity on my lost soul and revealed a sign to me? I've been researching the ten elites of Fodlan, but I can't tell fact from fiction. Anyhow, what can I help you with? Well, um, I found this pendant, and I think it's yours. Ah, right you are. Yeah, honestly, I'd resign myself to never seeing it again. It's a keepsake from my uncle, who has passed on. If I truly lost it, my grandfather would have had my head. Thanks for returning it to me, Marianne. You saved my tale. Please, it was nothing. I should be... No, I think that's enough researching for today. Why don't you join me for a nice chat? I just came to deliver the pendant. Sounds awfully lonely to only talk to those whom you have business with. Do you really dislike talking to people that much? It's just... I never know what to say. I'm sorry. No need to apologize. We'll figure it out as we go. Tell me, are you like this with your father too? Within the Alliance, Margrave Edmund is prone to debate. With a father like that, I would have thought... Margrave Edmund is my adoptive father. Oh, is he? I didn't know. Where were you born? That is none of your concern. I, um, I really must be going. She's hiding something, that much is clear. Ah, but that just makes me all the more desperate to know her secrets. Marianne, please accept my apologies for my behavior yesterday. I'm not sure what you mean. Asking you about your family like that was pretty insensitive of me. No matter how curious I am, that's no way to treat someone. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You weren't being insensitive. I just didn't want to talk about it. I don't spend much time talking about myself. Not to people, anyway. If not people, then with who? Unpeople? <gasps> Non-people? Well, yes. I'm much more comfortable talking to anyone who isn't a person. I was actually joking, but now I'm mystified. Who is it you like to talk to? Dorte the horse. Ah, of course. Good old Dorte. And does he understand what you tell him? We understand each other. He tells me when he's sleepy, or when his stomach hurts, or if his nose itches. Sounds like a complainer, that Dorte. But let's table this fascinating discussion for just a moment. Now that we've gotten in some small talk, I'd like to know what you're hiding. You are hiding something, right? Your lineage, perhaps? No. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If it's all just idle gossip, that's fine too. But if it's something silly like, my ancestors were cursed, therefore I'm cursed, you should know that I won't accept that nonsense. That sort of thinking is stupid, and that's all there is to it. Say your ancestors were thieves. Does that make you a thief, even if you've never stolen a thing? Of course not. 
But people have burdens to bear from the moment they're born. My burdens are so big that I... I'm sorry, I can't discuss this anymore. People certainly are born with burdens. She's right about that. But Marianne, don't you know that you can choose not to carry them? Aw, oh, do you have an itch back there? I guess you can't scratch it on your own, can you? Hi, Marianne. <gasps> oh, Claude, it's just you. Sorry, I know you're in the middle of an important discussion with Dorte, but can I talk to you? About what? It's about this thing you think you're burdened with. I've tried to guess what it is. Please don't. This is making me a little uncomfortable. There's no reason to feel uncomfortable. It's not like I plan on saying it aloud. But if my guess is correct, there's something I want to tell you. Will you hear me out? Fine. I will listen. Once upon a time, in a faraway place. What the... Are you telling me a story? Just listen. Once upon a time, in a faraway place, there was a young boy. This boy came from a despised lineage. In short, his mother was a daughter of the enemy. So the young boy was treated horribly by everyone around him. He hadn't done anything wrong. Everyone hated him simply for existing. Yelling, fighting back, explaining himself. Nothing he did could change his situation. When he was finally old enough, he ran far away from home. He escaped. It sounds to me like he had no choice. I would have done the same had it been me. Thing is, after he ran away, he still found himself in the very same position. People in the outside world hated him for where he came from. Well, now that's... The boy thought he had no place to go. All he could do was destroy the boundary between the inside and the outside worlds. Destroy the boundaries? Right. If there was no outside and inside, just one side to share, then the people outside wouldn't have a reason to hate him anymore, right? It wouldn't be easy, but if he managed it, he could shrug off that burden. The point is, people are born with burdens to carry. That much is undeniable. But whether they bind us or we cast them aside, that's up to us. So I think you should try to cast yours aside, Marianne. Put that heavy burden down. It's time. But I... I don't know if I can do it. It's okay. I'm here for you. We're the same, and I can help you. The same? <laughs> Claude, we have nothing in common. Hey, did you see that, Dorte? Your friend just smiled at me. Thank you for sharing your story. I suppose I could try casting aside burden, as you say. We can try together. Let's do that. And when we're free, we can change the whole world. Huh? Are you actually reading, Hilda? I thought you hated studying. Oh, hush. It's just a letter from my brother. He sends them all the time. Your brother, huh? Isn't he known as a great general of the Alliance? A true beacon of... Don't even start. That's got nothing to do with me. Uh-oh, better not let your brother hear you say that. It would break his fraternal heart. But all joking aside, it sounds like he really cares for you. You can say that again. He must be rather bored, too, now that the situation in Elmira has settled down. Ah, the Elmirans. The Eastern Menace, as they're often called. I did hear your brother had fought them a number of times. In fact, I hear he's even gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nadir, the great Elmiran warrior. Nadir the Undefeated, was it? Just another grizzled old man as far as I'm concerned. But my father was ecstatic when he heard my brother had defeated him. He paraded my brother all over our territory. What a pain that must have been for our people. A pain? Any celebration is something to be enjoyed. Celebration puts smiles on faces faster than anything. I'm sure even you at least congratulated him, right? A smile from you would surely mean the world to your brother. Well, sure. Then he got all worked up and started saying things like, I am the protector of Fodlin. That's not far from the truth, you know. Why do you think the Almirans have been so quiet lately? 
they're wary of your brother. If House Goneril of the Border were a bunch of weaklings, the Almirans would have invaded Fodlan a long time ago. You talk about it as though you've spoken to the Almirans yourself. Well, I am heir to the leading house of the Alliance. I'm privy to all kinds of information, whether I like it or not. <laughs> you act so nonchalant about your studies, but you know so much about politics and history. You're a hard guy to grasp, you know that, Claude? Oh, I disagree. I'd let you grasp me any day. My hand, my heart, even my neck. But if you want to know all of my secrets, you'll have to bear yours as well. What are you writing there, Hilda? Uh, wait, let me guess. You're replying to one of your brother's letters, right? Of course. It's a pain, but I make sure to always send him a response, otherwise he'll worry. It's much easier than when we live together. A few letters here and there are a small price to pay for this peaceful, brother-free environment. <laughs> well, that's a fine thing to do regardless of your reasons. As for me, it's been far too long since I've written to my parents. Oh, I thought your father had died. Not quite. He's still alive and kicking, as far as I know. The late Duke who died in an accident was my uncle. I see. I do recall you mentioning that your mother was born into the Regan family. What's your father like, if you don't mind me asking? He's quite the extravagant character. When I was a kid, he used to tie me to a horse and drag me around. Excuse me? In all fairness, I was quite a little brat. The horse thing sounds worse than it is. There's sort of a trick to it. A trick I hope I never need to learn. Your mother didn't step in and make him stop? Gods, no. She'd just laugh right along with him. If my father is extravagant, my mother's more like a warrior goddess or maybe a demon queen. This one time, she got into an argument with my combat instructor and wound up in a full-on fist fight with the guy. What's more, she won. My instructor was a mighty warrior, undefeated in a hundred battles, but even he was no match for her. Huh? But your mother is a lady of nobility. True, but she was the kind of woman to elope with the man she loved and throw it all away. Not your average duchess at all. Ooh, they eloped! I like that. It's so romantic. Imagine abandoning your family forever to be with the one you love. Not everyone can do that. It's not a question of can, it's a question of will. Even someone like you who generally despises effort would pull out all the stops for something you really care about. Isn't that right? Excuse me? I put in plenty of effort. Hey, that was a compliment. Anyhow, I look forward to the day when something inspires you to try your absolute hardest. It will be something to behold. I feel like I'm drowning in responsibilities. Claude, take my mind off it all. Regale me with another of your weird childhood stories. Okay then. How about an old story from a foreign land that my dad told me when I was a kid? Once upon a time, there was a white camel that got separated from his herd. <laughs> I'm so happy for that white camel. I really thought he was going to die. Was that story really worth bawling your eyes out over? <laughs> it was wonderful. Don't you know how moving that story is? You know, I never thought much of it until today. But seeing you bawling like that, I do appreciate it a little more now. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, you're always fake crying, aren't you? Getting all misty-eyed to make people think you're a delicate flower. What? You're awful. I only cry when I'm sad. Claim what you like, but I can spot real tears from fake tears any day of the week. Fess up. <laughs> if you understand me so well, maybe it's because you're no different. How's that? When you smile or laugh, it's not sincere. I can tell. I've only seen you genuinely smile a handful of times. Like when you're talking to the professor. Wow, good one, Hilda. You hit me right in the gut. I guess you're right. I'm not so different from you in that way. But how did you come to realize that? Have you been watching me that closely? I'm afraid so. My eyes seem to wander toward you of their own accord. What? Hold on. 
Forget I said that. I didn't say that. Nope, no can do. Forgetting isn't something this crafty brain of mine is capable of. Besides, my eyes have a tendency to wander in your direction, too. How else do you think I found out about your fake crying? Huh? What are you getting at? Say, Hilda, once everything's settled down, do you want to come meet my parents? I mean, don't get the wrong idea, you just seem interested in my family. Besides, you've opened up to me quite a bit, but I still haven't let you in on my own secrets. If you meet my parents, I think you'll understand, though it might come as a bit of a surprise. Your family? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Well then, if neither of us changes our minds before the opportunity presents itself, let's agree to go visit my home together. Although, if it's a long journey, my brother might not be too happy. True, that might be a tough nut to crack. As tough as Fodlan's locket. Is the water supposed to be this cold? God, my hand slipped again. Hey, what's that noise? What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry, okay? Another fine mess I've gotten myself into. What happened, Claude? You're soaked. The student whose turn it was to do the dishes today was ill, so I volunteered to take his place. The dining hall lady was on my case the whole time for breaking plates and getting water everywhere. Actually, not everywhere. Mostly on myself. It was just one big mess. It wore me right out, too. I could really use a nap about now. <laughs> you might be a noble with a fancy bloodline, but you sure don't act the part. Being noble or common doesn't have anything to do with washing dishes. Oh, I dare say most nobles would refuse to do it. But hey, I prefer it your way. You don't act like you're better than everyone. <laughs> I'm honored that you acknowledge my greatness. And I'm rather fond of your blunt way of praising a person's strengths, too. Really? To be honest, I don't actually trust my own ability to read people. I like to look for the good in them, but that doesn't always mean it's really there. I mean, you seem like a good person, but your heart could be black for all I know. You say you can't figure people out, but what you said just now was pretty shrewd. It's wise not to trust appearances alone. I'll keep that in mind. Though, I'm not sure I should be taking advice from someone covered in dish suds. <laughs> oh. yeah, I see your point. A little closer... Hey, Leone. What are you up to? Oh, come on! What'd you do that for? Look, you ran my quarry off. You were hunting? Oh, is the dining hall that short on food supplies? No, but I like to hunt every now and again. Keep my skills sharp. I suppose so. You're from a family of hunters, right? Well, there's no shortage of prey to hunt around here. True. Not many hunters around the monastery, huh? Rivers full of fish, trees bursting with fruit, mushrooms ready to harvest all over. It's the kind of place where you can really be self-sufficient. Guess we can thank the goddess for that. Uh, I don't know. I'm more inclined to thank the bountiful earth and the goddess for such things. The goddess may offer spiritual guidance, but she doesn't fill our bellies, that's for sure. Not a very noble-sounding thing, to disregard the goddess and honor the land. Leone, whose grace do you suppose humans live by? The goddess? The nobility? I'd say it's neither. It's the endless bounty of this magnificent land that gives us life. Won't hear me deny it. But who's to say it isn't the goddess whose protection makes nature thrive? I'm not the most devout person, but I'm not about to go around saying we don't need the goddess at all. I said she gives spiritual support, didn't I? I wouldn't go so far as to say she's wholly unnecessary. But in Elmira, Dagda, Bridget, and plenty of other places, they don't believe in the goddess. Nature is a blessing that knows nothing of borders. The goddess is the goddess, and the earth is the earth. They should both be revered for what they are. Hmm. Look, this is just my personal opinion. If you truly believe that everything depends on the goddess of Seros, that's your... Hey, it's fine. You don't have to worry about me. I'm a believer, but I know there are those who aren't. And I kind of like your way of thinking. Giving thanks to nature and all. It makes sense. I knew a wild girl like you would be able to get behind an idea like that. What? Like I'm feral or something? 
Hey, you know, this kind of talk could be viewed as heresy if it was public. Yeah, probably. We'll just have to keep it to ourselves. Well, we've got another battle coming up. What do you think of our chances? Winning is always the goal. At any rate, I've done everything I can to prepare. That's the right attitude. I'm sure they're doing all they can on their side, too. I don't doubt it, but however strong they are, it's no more than a Fodlan concern. Who knows how far this world extends beyond the boundaries of Fodlan? Talk of strength or weakness doesn't amount to much when it's only in relation to a tiny corner of the world. Guess you're right. Thinking about it like that, even this war seems like a storm in a teacup. Exactly. It's nothing more than an internal quarrel amongst the people of Fodlan. <laughs> Typical laid-back Claude. I always like talking to you. Your perspective on the world is so refreshing. Things I thought were obvious turn out not to be. The way you think, that changes the way you see things. Common sense never tells the whole story. It's similar to what we were talking about before, about how you need to doubt yourself first. True enough, but where did you get these ideas? That perspective of looking past the walls of Fodlan, when it's all we can see in front of us. Do you really want to know? I do. Uh, but I'm afraid now isn't the time. When this war is won, I'll tell you all about it. It'll be easier for me to show you than to tell you. Show me? Are we going somewhere? It's quite a distance. You'll start to appreciate how big the world is if you go. <laughs> Sounds eye-opening. I'll look forward to it. Can we call it a promise? Yes, it's a promise. But first, let's win this war and leave it far behind us. <sighs> As expected, I am not finding anything at all. Flame, are you looking for something in particular? I was just hoping for general reading that might illustrate the lives of city dwellers. Right. Well, there should be regional records somewhere around here. I haven't need of official records or anything of the like. Just some light reading on the subject. Light reading? What do you mean by that? Oh, you know, books that cover things like what types of activities young people enjoy, how they spend their free time, popular fashions and trends, things of that sort, and even... Perhaps, stories about romance? Ah, I see what you're getting at. Try asking a traveling merchant. I hear they keep stock of books like that. As for here, I don't think you're going to find much aside from a bunch of stuffy records. We do get new books donated on a fairly regular basis, but... Um, you know. My brother? I am afraid I do not follow. Apparently, he directly approves every book before it's allowed to grace these shelves. You know, to make sure nothing inappropriate gets through. I see. I did not realize he had a hand in such things. Well, I suppose it really is no use searching here. Why were you looking for those sorts of books anyway? Well, truth be told, I am not particularly well-versed in the ways of ordinary people. Seteth never taught me of such things and he strictly forbade me from spending much time out and about on my own. Yeah, I had a feeling that might be the case. Sounds like Sedith. I understand and appreciate that he acted from a place of concern, of course. Without a doubt. It's obvious that you're his whole world, for better or worse. By the way, I've been wondering, are you two from a noble family? Hmm? You've clearly had a rather high-class upbringing, and both of you have crests. That can only mean you come from a prominent bloodline, right? Of course not. No, no, you, you are mistaken. So, your refined way of speaking isn't because of your upbringing? I was not aware that my speech differed so greatly from my companions. Do I really sound so... formal to you? Well, look, don't worry too much about it. I'm probably just overthinking things. Probably. Hi, Flame. Have the Four Saints caught your fancy? Hello there, Claude. No, not particularly. I was merely looking. I see. In any case, do you mind if I ask you a little something? It's about your family's origin. This again? <laughs> there is truly nothing of interest to discuss on that topic. Ah, but when you try to change the subject like that, it drives me mad with curiosity. 
That said, taking a secret by force isn't my style. That's why I devised a different approach. Relentless nagging. Might I suggest giving up entirely? Truth be told, my brother has asked that I not speak of my background to anyone. I thought it might be something like that. Oh well, guess I'd better give up on trying to get you to tell me yourself. Instead, why don't I tell you about the theory I've come up with? You've concocted a theory, have you? I suppose there is no harm in listening to it. I did a bit of investigating into the crests that you and Sedith bear. Sedith's is the major crest of Keyhole, and yours is the major crest of Sethleen. Where did you learn of this? Oh, I just took a peek at some records by a renowned crest scholar. I'd rather not say more than that. Anyway, my point is that I don't think I've ever heard of two siblings each bearing the major crests of a pair of saints. If the legends are true, then Saint Keyhole was Saint Sethleen's father, wasn't he? Which means if you and Sedith were the descendants of Saint Sethleen, that would explain how you two came to possess Keyhole and Sethleen's crests. You mean to suggest that my brother and I are the children's children's children of Sethleen? That about sums it up. <laughs> An interesting theory, to say the least. But surely you must know. Saint Sethleen was never married. There are no tales of her having ever had children. Sure, sure, but the possibilities are endless. It's not like legends are known for their accuracy. But based on your reaction, I guess I'm probably following a bad lead here. Hello, Flane. Isn't it about time you told me the truth? About what exactly? Who you really are. Villains are after you for your blood. There's no doubt that you're someone special. And that's why Sedith is always worrying about you so much, right? Well, yes. I see no reason to hide that fact. But just what makes that blood of yours so special? More than anything I've been wanting to find out teaches true identity. But yours is bothering me almost as much. Somehow, I can't seem to stop thinking about you. It's almost like a crush. I have a crush on your secrets, sweet flame. <laughs> Such flattery. I've tried asking Sedith, but there's no sign of him budging on the issue. At this point, I guess I just need better bargaining skills. Or how about this? If you tell me the truth, I'll do anything you say. That is not something I am willing to share, unfortunately. However, since you are so passionate on the matter, I will promise you something. What's that? If you somehow manage to uncover the truth of my identity, I will acknowledge it as truth. <laughs> That's real nice of you and all, but I think if I could come up with the truth, I'd be able to tell from your reaction anyway. You're not great at hiding your emotions, after all. If you do somehow figure it out, then I would ask something of you, Claude. I would ask that you reveal your own true identity. <laughs> now that's a request I wasn't expecting. It has been clear to me for quite some time now that you are no ordinary noble. I have been pondering... Well, you, quite a lot lately. The curiosity is enough to drive me mad. I see. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. Looks like we both have a little crush on our hands, huh? I hope the day comes when we can talk freely about both of our identities. I have told you already, I am quite all right. You say that, but... I do not care what you have to say. I could not bear to stand here and do nothing. Flane! Hey there, Flane. Looks like Sedith is as overprotective as ever. Eavesdropping, were you? Well, you are spot on. I do wish you would leave me be and learn to trust me. Listen, Flane. Before I take a stab at your true identity, there's something I want to ask. And what is that? Sedith is your father, isn't he? Um, pardon me? I've been thinking about this for a while, and my latest theory doesn't make sense otherwise. That overprotective attitude of his, it seems like more than just sibling concern. More like a father protecting his only daughter. How can you be so sure? Hilda's brother and Raphael are quite similar, are they not? 
They're both pretty clingy, sure, but even they are willing to let their sisters live their own lives. Whereas Sedith, there's something more at play there. An entirely different dynamic. I imagine that is because I... Even taking into account your special blood and the people targeting you because of it, I feel like Sedith has devoted his whole being to you, like only a father would. Have you confronted my brother with your theory? <laughs> As if he'd tell me anything, even if I did. Though maybe if I tried to trick a reaction out of him, I could try calling out Daddy from behind him when he least expects it. Nah, he'd probably kill me if I tried that. Not a good idea. That sounds most entertaining. I would love to see you give it a try. Perhaps you could request a... Father, please grant me your daughter's hand in marriage. <laughs> oh, I can feel my face turning red. <laughs> Hey now, don't joke about that. That's something that should be done properly when the right time comes. Do you mean to say that the right time will come eventually then? Hmm? <laughs> well, you never know what the future holds. But forget that for now. I want to talk about... As though this were something easily shelved. This topic holds far more appeal than that of identities, if you ask me. Ah, there's really no better place for my midday nap than under the shade of a nice big tree. Ah, the twittering of the little birds. Hmm, it's like they're singing a lullaby just for me. Guy, ah, Is that a dagger? Am I being ambushed? Claude, why are you lazing about? You should be training. Shamir! Is this your doing? Talk about unfriendly. Another inch and you would have sliced my handsome nose clean off my roguishly beautiful face. But I didn't. Fortunately for you. You know, if you wanted to give me a talking to, you could have done so with your words instead. That's how most people do the talking thing. Conversation was not my intention. Well, what then? A prank? That's not better. I thought we were under attack. I could have died from the shock. <sighs> Look closely at the dagger. Is that... Right. There's a poor spider impaled on it. A poisonous spider. The tiniest bite from which can cause fever, headache, and relentless vomiting. Or worse. Yikes. I guess this little guy is more vicious than he looks. I noticed it descending towards your face. Ah, so you saved me from a certain doom. Well, in that case, I'm sorry for questioning your motives. I promise to repay the favor someday. I'll keep that in mind. Wow, so that's what the greatest sniper of all the knights is capable of. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Impressive as ever. It's always satisfying to see such skill in motion. It's nothing to boast about, just part of the job. Sure, but I hear there isn't a knight out there who can match your skill at reconnaissance and infiltration missions. Don't forget assassination and coercion. Is there someone you need killed? Ooh, so violent. Why would you jump to that conclusion? You went out of your way to find me. I thought you might need a favor. It's sorry to disappoint, but I didn't come to request an assassination. I just want to talk. With me? Of course. You've piqued my interest for a while now. A little birdie told me you were born in Dagda. Is that true? That's pretty far away, beyond even Bridget to the west. So, what brought you to Fodlan? I worked as a mercenary in Dagda. That is, until I was defeated in battle against the Empire and left for dead. I see. I'm surprised they didn't take you as their prisoner. I know how to conceal myself. Yeah, of course you do. Still, with your particular skill set, couldn't you make your way back to Dagda whenever you please? That is true. I could return if I really wanted. But Rhea took me in, and I owe her a debt. I also don't hate it here. For now, this is where I belong. Where you belong, huh? That's heavy stuff. I wonder if this is where I really belong. I wouldn't know. You need to figure that out yourself.
Huh. Not bad. You're quite skilled. Shamir, what a rare treat for you to start a conversation for a change. Is it? It's not possible you came to ask for my help with something. Could it be you want to become closer friends? Don't flatter yourself. That's cruel. You could have at least hesitated a beat before answering. Last we spoke, you were questioning whether or not you belong here. <laughs> you remember that, do you? Well, yes, I do think this is where I belong. For now. I have things that I want to achieve, and I can only do that by staying right where I am. That said, once I've done what I'm here to do, it's hard to say whether I'll stay or leave. I might end up searching for another place to belong. That is true for most people. Life would be tedious if we knew what lies ahead. Whether or not you belong in a place can change at any time. As soon as you settle in somewhere new, you begin to question your decision. That's true. I guess trying things out and searching for our own path is what life is about. And both of our paths have led us here. This is where we belong right now. Even if it's just a temporary coincidence, we should cherish it while it lasts. What are you going on about now? I'm just saying we should make the most of this time we have together, since we don't know how long it'll last. Once it's gone, it might never come back. Right? Is this your sad attempt at flirting? <laughs> I will admit, you're an interesting one. Do you remember this place? This is where your dagger almost took my nose off. Ah, yes. The poisonous spider. You really scared me senseless back then. I thought I was about to die. I would not take a life without reason. Ever since then, I've been intrigued by you. Somehow, I keep returning to this spot. For a nap, I'm sure. <laughs> you see right through me, don't you? But it's true that I think about you a lot. What are you going to do once the war is over? Have you decided on your next place to belong? I haven't given it much thought. Will you go back to Dagda? There was no one waiting for me there, and no reason to hurry back. Besides, I've grown accustomed to the nomadic lifestyle. I can make deal wherever I find myself. Though, I may be interested in visiting Almira. Almira? That's a bit out of nowhere. It's as far from my homeland as possible. That's reason enough for me. And you? Where will you go? Oh, I haven't decided anything just yet. But if you're heading to Almira, maybe I should pay a visit to Dagda. Why would you do that? Because it's where you grew up. That certainly warrants a look. And once we've both seen our fill, how about we plan to meet back up somewhere in Fodlan? And do what? We can tell each other where we're headed next. Who knows, we might find ourselves belonging in the same place again. Though if we do, I hope it'll turn out to be more permanent than this temporary coincidence. <laughs> we can decide where we belong when we get there. True. The future's more fun when you don't know what it holds. I look forward to finding out, Shamir. Hey there, Cyril. You're working hard as usual. Nah, just doing my job. Rhea herself gives you your daily tasks, doesn't she? The church employs a lot of people, but not too many of them can claim they get to speak with the Archbishop every day. You should be proud of yourself. She clearly values your work ethic. Hey, um, is that everything you wanted to say? Cause I'm kinda busy here. Actually, I was hoping to ask you about Rhea. There's so much we don't know about her, but I thought maybe you... Yeah, I know more about Lady Rhea than anybody. But why should I tell you anything about her? So cold. Think about who you're talking to. Huh? What are you to me? You... don't know who I am? Of Course I do. You're Claude, house leader of the Golden Deer. That's not what I mean. Well, never mind then. Tell me, don't you ever miss your homeland? Almira? Yes, Almira. Uh, judging by that expression, I'm guessing you're not terribly homesick. Life was a whole lot harder for me there than it's ever been around here. My dad and mom both died in the war, 
and there was nobody there to look after me. The king, he didn't do anything to help, so I had to survive by being smart. I had to stop being a kid real quick. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't have to apologize. It's not your fault. Regardless of whose fault it is, I'm still sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't even know that an acquaintance of mine was suffering. And sorry for asking a tactless question about your homeland. I should have known that it was likely to bring back bad memories. Nah, I get sad or mad when I think about it, but I'm used to it, so I don't mind any. I see that. Even still, I apologize for being careless. Okay, well, thanks, Claude. If the King of Almira was like you, maybe things would have been better. Maybe the King's not a bad person and just had other stuff to worry about. But that's not much of an excuse. <laughs> if I ever meet the King of Almira, I'll give him a stern talking to on your behalf. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. Bunch of things to get done. You really are on the other side now, aren't you? Huh. Well, if nothing else, it's good of you to turn a blind eye to me. I don't know what that means, but... Okay, bye, Claude. Sorry, Claude. You can't go past. Huh? Ah, Cyril, it's you. Is there a problem? It's not the first time I've been to the Holy Tomb. Rhea herself took me there once. Besides, the inside's been scoured by the Imperial Army. There's nothing left there now. Don't matter. Lady Rhea said nobody could go in, so I can't let you through. I gotta do what Lady Rhea says. You wanna break them rules? Then you'll be her enemy. If you're trying to do that, I'll have to fight you. Fine, I get it. I wouldn't hesitate to make an enemy of Rhea if it came to that. But I'd rather not fight with you. So I'll back off. For now. Why is that? Does it matter? Dunno. With your status, you could smack me to the ground and walk right over me. I guess. But I wouldn't. We're friends. I thought you were the kind of guy who'd smack down just about anybody if you needed to. You really are a stubborn one. All right then, I'll tell you. I swore I'd change this world so that those without status are no longer oppressed. Though you were never one of the people I was hoping to save. I never knew that there were people in Almira in your kind of situation. I realized that my own perspective was too narrow. You helped me realize that. So, I owe you. Did you just say you're all about saving people who are oppressed? Really? I did. Is it so strange to hear that from me? It's just... You reminded me of Lady Rhea there for a second. Lady Rhea always tried to save us folks without any status in the world. Like when she let an outsider like me stay at the monastery. That was real nice. She brought in those kids from Ramire Village when they lost their parents and... Well, I'm not a religious man. I'm sure Rhea wouldn't want to be lumped in with a guy like me. Lady Rhea didn't do those things because the goddess told her she should. She did it because she wanted to. I can tell you that. I see. In that case, maybe I don't need to make an enemy of her. Thanks, Cyril. I think you've brought me a step closer to my dream. Thanks to you too, Claude. If I was able to help you, then that makes me happy. Hey there, Claude. Where are you headed? If you need some extra muscle, count me in. No thanks. Not much need for heightened security at the monastery. Well, most of the time, anyway. Ish, I can take a hint. I'm just trying to help you out. The way I see it, can't do better than cozying up to the Claude Von Regan, future leader of the Alliance. You can get as cozy as you like, but I don't think that'll lower the price on your head. Couldn't hurt. People trust you. They trust the folks you run with. I could use a little trust in my life. So you're hoping this newfound trust will trick more people into lending you money? Yeah, count me out. You know, fighting debt with debt won't work, right? <sighs> Just as well. If you mess up leading the Alliance, their plan's a bust anyway, so count me out, pal. By the way, Claude, are you really the heir of House Regan? Yes. That's my current understanding, anyway. Why do you ask? I've never heard any talk of the last Duke Regan leaving a son behind when he died in that accident. Duke Oswald the Old. Your father? Tall tale if you ask me. 
And if that's not the case, then who exactly did you get your Regan blood from? Look at you figuring things out all by yourself. Sorry to say the true story isn't all that interesting. I was born to an offshoot of House Regan. When my crest manifested, I was accepted into the ruling bloodline. That's all there is to it. Nice try, but I'm not buying it. House Regan produces dukes and leads the whole of the Alliance. Not having an heir is a matter of life and death. Any relative with a crest would be accepted immediately. But no one even knew you existed until fairly recently. It's fishy, Claude. Remarkably fishy. I think I've finally figured you out. You're working for Lawrence, aren't you? Here's what I really can't work out. Duke Oswald's only daughter, Tiana? Whatever happened to her? I met her a few times when I was a kid. She was a great lady. A real looker, too, let me tell ya. I see your mind was just as pure when you were a kid as it is now. How'd you even cross paths with her? As the legitimate heir of a minor noble house, I got a pretty decent glimpse into high society. Lady Tiana was something special. The stuff of dreams, really. And one day, she just vanished. Poof. Gone. I'll never forget hearing about it. Wow. So, you've had a particular interest in older women since way back when. Sorry, go on. When my old man told me, I cried buckets. Even Holst lost it. Holst? As in Holst the Indomitable Alliance General? Huh. I never knew that. Yeah. And after a while, I heard a strange rumor. Some say Lady Tiana left to live in a far-off land. Once I remembered that, the rest fell into place. Right. Say, have you considered minding your own business? Isn't that enough of a handful as it is? If you want to have a real discussion sometime, bring me facts. Not a bunch of tired gossip. Deal? Anyway, Teach is waiting for me at the training ground, so I better get going. Uh, nice try, Claude, but I'm on to you. Hey, Claude! Care to pick up where we left off? I got some time to kill. You'll have to kill time on your own, I'm afraid. My calendar's full at the moment. Ah, uh, don't be like that. You're not afraid I'm gonna expose your true identity, are you? I would never. Besides, my own bloodline isn't so lofty that I can get away with something like that. I bet your father would just love to hear you say that. And the Albrecht family is from a distinguished noble house, so I'm not sure what you mean. Not as distinguished as you would think. And my mom wasn't born a noble. Ah, the plot thickens. So, your mother was a commoner then? In a sense, but it's complicated. Listen up, and I'll tell you a little story. You know Kupala, yeah? Those folks have been living in the mountains of Fodlan's throat for ages. I know it well. Tales of that place were carried on the wind to where I grew up. Here's my favorite. In a land surrounded by tall mountains, untouched by civilization, lies a hidden village. The people who live there, the mystical Kupala tribe. They say that an ancient and powerful bloodline runs through their veins to this very day. Don't try to find them, people say, or you're liable to get hexed. Or so the tale goes. That part was probably added to spice up the story a bit, but even so, they're certainly a mysterious lot. <laughs> They don't leave their homeland too often, so it's only natural that strange rumors would arise. And your mother, is she really some kind of Kupala princess or something? Not a princess, but she was born and raised there. She left, got lost, and was rescued. By my dad. Ah, he fell head over heels for her. Made her his wife. That's when her troubles really started. Did your father tell anyone where she was from? Of course not. But it didn't matter. She was still a stranger of questionable lineage. The family treated her horribly. That eventually led to them splitting up and my dad remarrying. That's not an uncommon circumstance for a noble house. Where is she now? With nowhere else to turn, she went back to Kupala. Even though my pops tried to convince her to stay. I'm guessing you two left for much the same reason. Too hard to put up with the foul treatment, right? That's part of it. If my mom had been Fodlin nobility, my life would have been very different. So, what do you think? Did I drum up some empathy? After all, half of your blood comes from... I hear you, Balthus. Can't say I don't empathize. 
though our circumstances are pretty different. So you admit it then! <laughs> I knew I was right about you. My instincts are second to none. Your instincts, right. Look, if it makes you happy, you just go on believing whatever you want. I'll do just that. Say, Claude, it'd be a shame if your true identity was exposed, yeah? A real shame. I'm thinking you better... set up a meeting between me and your mom? She was my first crush, after all. I had it bad for her back in the day. I'm still haunted by the fact that I never had the chance to tell her. That's... bothersome. And that aside, you do know that time didn't exactly stop for her, right? Not a problem, pal. Age is beauty. Balthus, you and I are of like minds, so I'd like to get your opinion on something. Oh, is this about the age thing? As a rule, so long as she's younger than my own mother, it's fair game, pal. Noted, but that's not what I wanted to talk about. Ever, really. Do you remember what I said about the first thing we need to accomplish in this war? That bit about busting open the lid that keeps the people of Fodland from the rest of the world? That's right. I'd like to know your thoughts on the matter. Okay. Well, everyone seemed to eat it up, so I'm fine with it too. Certainly not against it. In a world like that, my mom wouldn't have to fear what others think of her. But it all hinges on if you can shape reality into the vision you have in mind. That's no small task. Hmm. I had a feeling you'd say something like that. Please, go on. I'm all for mixing up different ways of life and bloodlines. But who knows what it'll really mean for Fodlin. We'll be free from things that previously bound us. Walls will crumble. Things will change. Drastically. At the same time, the world we've defended for years could easily become unrecognizable. Everything we've built up until now could fall to ash. Hard to say how it'll all shake out. All we can do is wait and see. Maybe all will end well. Or maybe not. All I want is for everyone to accept each other. That's the ideal I'm striving for. It's deceptively simple when you think about it. Look, if getting exactly what you wanted was easy, I'd be drowning in gold. Don't get caught up in the stakes. We just have to throw the dice and see where they fall. Good advice. That's all we can ever do, really. I just have to do my best and prepare for the worst. You got it. I can't help with funding, obviously, but you have my support. Speaking of funds, you're not planning to sell the secrets of my origins for a quick payoff, right? There are people with deep pockets who'd love to see me fall. They'd pay well for information like that. <laughs> Don't worry, Claude, I wouldn't sell out a friend. Not even for a small fortune. Most likely. Yeah, that's not worrisome at all. <laughs> I was just kidding. After all, I have that promise to look forward to. You won't let me down, right? Oh, of course not. And that promise was... what exactly? How about hooking me up with your mom? After we bust open that lid, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, age difference aside, you know she's married, right? I'm not a loon, Claude. I'm not trying to marry her. I just want some closure with my childhood crush. Is that a fact? Well, it'll be interesting to see whether my father can kill you before my mother beats him to it. 